Okay, this is Vincent de Rapontini. I'm here finally getting Francine's whole story. This is, what is your name? Francine. Francine. Coursi. Coursi. And this is the young lady that I interviewed on top of the flower pot on Canada Day. And she got assaulted really bad. It kind of shows that Ottawa police was violent way before the convoy. Would you like to tell the audience what happened to you simply for not wearing a mask? Yes. Well, it all started because I chose not to wear a mask. So I got a medical exemption for so-called anxiety, but really it's because I have human rights that protects me. The first article is the right to life. That means that I have the right to life to breathe safely, which means to me wearing a mask right at the beginning of the pandemic or fake pandemic or whatever, to me made no sense. So I got myself a medical exemption and I went shopping wherever I've been shopping since I've been a toddler with my mom. So I walk in, a uh, second wave is at the 11th month and uh, the new security guard there decided to tell me to go shopping elsewhere. So I, know, I told him that that was called segregation and discrimination so he didn't care so it lasted for two weeks for him to tell me leave 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 at one point I did a video with all my friends and said uh, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna ask them to call the police cops to give me a ticket of the crime I was committing which uh, at the time they said I was trespassing with a medical exemption. Keep that in mind, and the bylaw protects me. Keep that in mind. Because the bylaw said that as long as you had exemption, you didn't need to wear a mask. Yeah. So, I said, okay, we'll call the cops, and the cops will come and issue me a ticket, and the ticket will read my crime, which is trespass, without a mask. And then I'll be able to go to court. My, one of my rights that I hang on to is the right to trial, a fair trial. So I said that. Call the cops, they'll give me a ticket, I'll go in front of the judge, show my medical exemption, and talk about security guard overreach. Because there was a lot of that in 2021. Now, they didn't like that, so the cops, when they uh, um, came in, they didn't talk with me. They just said, you want a ticket? I'll give you one. One cop was on this side trying to trip my foot, but I was steadfast on standing my ground so she couldn't trip me and make me fall. While the other one was trying to break my wrist to remove my phone as I was recording up until that point that they, they made me drop my phone because my, my wrist was breaking almost. And they so were they, really after that phone because they didn't yeah. want to be on camera. Yeah, well, the camera is definitely a uh, weapon to them. They don't want to show any proof. But at that point, what happened was she ended up saying, you want a ticket? I'll give you one as she grabbed me and tried to trip me. And what? after the phone was gone, that's when they both lifted me and dropped me. That's called, in wrestling, it's called body slam. My knee broke. I felt it. The impact was so uh, disgusting. I lifted my head and I said immediately to the cop, call the ambulance, you just broke my knee. They're supposed to de-escalate. It's part of the training and call the ambulance. They didn't. They both, on each side, jumped on my back with the knee. Boom. Boom. This was the Ottawa police, the same ones that were. I think it was Peel cops. Peel police at the time? I think, yeah. I, I okay. saw their badge and it said Peel. What were they doing in Ottawa at that time? Exactly, exactly. And my video shows until the point where she said, you want a ticket, I'll give you one. And my camera just went on the ground at that point. But at least that was caught. That she said, you want a ticket, I'll give you one. So it was vindictive. And you were the same frame of mind now, you weren't being antagonistic no. to them or anything? No, either. I was stating the truth that the store may be a private corporation, but it signed a legal document serving the public. So it's, for, it's private for public. 
If you sign a contract with the city, you have to serve the public, and I was a public. So all through my few minutes with them, or not even few, it went really fast, I did specify to the security guard even that they couldn't do that, that there was a, it was a, against a criminal code to discriminate and to segregate. Everything is against the criminal code in this pandemic. Everything is lawlessness. So what happened is um, they, after they dropped me and they refused to call the ambulance, they dropped their knee both on my back and searched me. And the way they searched me was like almost like sexual assault. They felt like, oh, fuck, what are you doing, you know? And so what happened is they both, I guess they, they, they were training or something on me. It felt like that. So they put handcuffs on me and then one of them lifted me. On this side, she lifts me. But she drops me. My knee's broken. She, she lifts, right drops. on your knee on purpose, you think? Well, because I was heavy. Okay. I mean, I, I after they uh, body slammed me and they slammed me with their knee a little more, uh, I was going in and out of the consciousness because they really did drop me. And... and uh, the, the way that they brought me to the car was almost criminal because you know how they, they're supposed to lift you together and bring you together. But no, what they did was they lift, ah, oh, fuck it, she dropped me. Then he would lift, ah, oh, fuck, they, they didn't lift me according to both togetherness. Were they laughing they, about it or just... Um, I was going in and out of coaches, but one thing that I noticed was the local food store owner there was cheering it, it, I could hear like cheering and the customers too to get me out it was like a laughing matter in the crowd I heard the cheering going on it was like almost evil demonic in that and room. this is the independent grocery store on the corner of bank and bank yeah. and some and the Somerset. Somerset door yeah and it's wet and it's you know it's January and so and that store is right in the middle of the new uh, LGBT at uh, True and Not Neighborhood where yeah. everybody's like brainwashed about that. Good point, good that. point, yeah, good exactly. point. So, so as, as there's a, you know, I'm injured. They, the least they could have done is lift me in a togetherness, just like they lift me, yeah, they just to human drop kindness, me. Yeah, kindness, human kindness. Well, they, yeah. there, there wasn't, when the girl said, the car cops, when she said, you want a ticket, I'll give you one. Right away, we hear vindictiveness. So they both lifted me together, but when it came to dragging me out of the store, they dragged me not togetherness. They, that's what I mean. She lift, dropped, he dro lift, dropped, all the way outside of the store into the... And... The worst part is I could hear fucking people cheering and I could see like, and it cracked oh my, my eyes. Oh my God, they're the, cheering, they're watching somebody get hurt and yeah, they're cheering Yeah, that's the it. local food store owner and the security guard and some residents. And so what what I found weird as, as hell is I didn't see, like there was a guy in a wheelchair came in as I was telling the security guard, you are a private, yes I agree, but you signed a contract with the city to serve the public. I am. Without discrimination, you can't do that. And so, unless I committed a crime, but I didn't. I didn't no, steal you're, nothing. You're, you're very uh, kind. You're very calm. Usually, uh, And I know my human you, rights. We've encountered you up here many times. You might speak strongly about something you believe in, but you don't go calling people out their name. Mm -hmm. You don't go threaten them. You, you're, you're not even like some of these other people out here. You don't antagonize the police. You're just very peaceful. You don't bother nobody unless they bother you. We watch that. You know, it's God's witness right there, or our witness too. Right. They don't like the Ottawa residents at that corner. Don't like human rights. They don't like the word freedom. They hate the truckers, and they hate me because, in their mind, I represent. In their mind, I represent the freedom fighters or the truckers. They don't like us. Either way. As they dragged and dropped me like a rag doll to the car, 
they shoved me in and then the girl cop went in the front and started going through my bag and dropping stuff on the top of the car while he was trying to get me in the car my leg was unable to move I mean even the even the SIU special investigations unit I made a complaint they didn't want to take my case until I say I have videos in the store I have videos oh shit they went and confiscated that my raid my video to clear the cops not to help you no I didn't know that the SIU clears the cops that's their job the OIPRD, same thing. You make a complaint to OIPRD, the retired cops, they're not going to be on my side. I know that now. So as, they, as the guy cop was telling me to... What he said was... Yeah, they need a community foot. citizen review to judge things, yeah, not, not to have... A, not the retired uh, cops? Yeah, just like the judges, they're all appointed, the mm -hmm. senators are appointed, they're not representative of the people, and that's one of the major problems in Canada. You know, they're not elected by the people, so they're not answering to you, me, you know, Charlie down the street, my cameraman, and people sitting over there, they're answering to the people that appointed them or got them their jobs, you know. Well, I seen, I, I was, I, I, in the hospital, I was looking at the SIU uh, current complaints. Uh, I was at the 50th, and I'm in the hospital. And how long were you in the hospital for? 25 days. 25 days? In 25 days, there's 50 more. And 50 more is 1% because most claims are dropped or not accepted, just like the COVID vaccine uh, injured. So basically, one guy, he was killed. Do you know what his crime was? He was suspicious. So at 6.30 a.m. and the guy's outside of his house, just roaming around, he's outside of his house at 6.30 a.m., and he, he got killed. And what there was his crime? He was suspicious. The so police killed him or? Yeah. Oh my God. So that's what I read. And uh, that's what, that was his crime. And it didn't come out in any major news? So the like SIU said t about me, my crime was I didn't want to leave the store. I didn't want to wear a mask. Yeah, but that's just a misdemeanor. You don't beat the shit out of somebody yeah. for a trespassing. Yeah. You, know? you could so forcibly move them out of there, but you're not supposed to hurt them. But forcefully, most time you force somebody out, you will injure them. So what they do is the SIU is hired, retired cops hired, to investigate cops, offenders and re-offenders that injure serious injury yeah. rape and kill now if you get killed raped or seriously injured and they didn't consider you seriously no injured. Oh my until God. i said that there was a camera that recorded all from the store and my camera then they said okay we'll take your case but they worked on my case just to drop it they called three different media to say that I was a mask opponent. Oh that my was God. my crime. Not trespass, but mask opponent. And so when I was, after shoving me in the car, in the back, you know, there's no space for knee at all. Eh? My leg is outside. It's like a football here. And so my, I'm like sort of going in and out of consciousness, but I hear him saying, yelling, Put your foot in the car or I'll crush you because he wanted to close the door. That I didn't record with my phone because by that time my phone's on the floor. And so my hands are in the back so I had to take, I had to move like this and grab myself and move in. And you were in extreme pain to oh, that yeah. Oh yeah. So meanwhile I see her going through my bag as if like it's a leisure job. She loves it. And uh, he's leisurely telling me my rights, but he didn't say it all. Because I know I used to watch cops on duty, and I know the spill, spiel that they say when they captivate you to bring you somewhere to arrest. And so he says partly my rights as he's writing a ticket. Shameful ticket, $65. All over, all over a little yeah. misdemeanor. 
So when it was time, like, uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it took so fucking this, long. Your story is so sad and, and, mm -hmm. and it's moronic. What It's kind of stupid what they've done. And that just shows how much the people have been brainwashed by the government propaganda. And the cheering. And, yeah, in the media and all the residents, you know, go, we were just up on the hill a little while ago, up by the statue talking about how they, they've educated and brainwashed the populace for decades. And it's getting so bad, you know, here in Canada. We're going to have to cut this interview short pretty much, but we're going to put your email address. You don't mind getting letters and support I'd love from to. people, yeah. Keep in mind, I did 25 days in the hospital and took seven months to relearn to walk. And in those seven months, and I couldn't get can you no... Show, can you show the audience how big that pin is in your leg? From here to here. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty. They big. had to open from here to here. So it's, a, it's like here. almost a, two, a foot long pin, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Twelve and a half. Did you ever go get legal help over this? Yeah, but n there's no cops, uh, there's no lawyers in Canada that's going to take police brutality because police brutality is covered until on the qualified immunity. Yeah, this. they can rape, kill, and seriously under the name, injury. Under the name yes. of COVID, yeah. And not, not not only that, before COVID, they had the qualified immunity. To a certain degree, unless they acted really wantonly. That's so what I'm for saying. reasonable force. So they qualified my case as reasonable force. Yeah, but when they, the young lady, Julie Kaye, I don't know if you know her, when they bounced her head off the cop car. Oh, fuck. Tamara Lich's, Lich, Lich's attorney handled that one, Lawrence Greenspun, and he and he body slammed the police in court over it. Have you spoken to Lawrence about this yet? No. You might want to do that. You mind if we give you his number later? I'd love to. Yeah, because he represents stuff like that, and yours sounds like that kind of case or is over It's ridiculous, beyond. isn't it? So, when I think about it, I have, when I talk about it step by step, I have tears in my eyes. Yeah, a lot of the audience uh, made comments about just the short piece you said about it on Canada Day. That's why I've been looking to run into you, and finally you're up here. Mm -hmm. you're like, that way even prevents you from coming up here getting around like you used to. Mm. Thank you so much, Francine, for I, coming in. I want to just add that I hang around that bank at Somerset every day, and I boycott the, the two doors from the local food store. And then around it, there's three bus stops that I equally... Boycott. And you talk to people about freedom. Nobody wants to talk about freedom. Nobody wants to talk about COVID. The older people you notice do, the older the, people. Nobody, most people, 99% don't want to talk Not to in me. That neighborhood, except yeah. when you guys come, wow, I get a hug. Yeah. But most people don't want to talk. Most people actually hate us. They hate what we represent, freedom. Why do you think that is? Because... The government narrative? How many injections did they get? Yeah. And when I got beat up, they, they had, what, maybe one or two injections yeah. by then? And maybe not. 2021, did they start having injections by then? I don't know. No way. I can't so, remember. People, pe I know Canada was out of the vaccine and they didn't have any for mm -hmm. a while because he gave them all to China or whatever he did there. I can't exactly remember. Anyways, here's your hug from us. All right, thank you so much for the interview, Francine. And we'll put this up and we'll let you see it. And you don't mind people contacting you to talk about awesome. this? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, because you're awesome. I don't have lady. a phone number anymore because Rogers uh, seem to have cut me off, even though they understand I got beat up and I lost my job and I'm unable to pay right now the whole balance for a year. And uh, But I have the email. All right, So I look good. at it every day. All and right. I'm willing to bounce around wherever because I have a bike. Yeah. It took me seven months to relearn to walk and talk and chew at the same time. Yeah. And what they did is they gave me a voice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And the pe a lot of people is going to be with you because your story is so horrendous and, yes. and stupid, you know. And you learn all you got in order for all this to end is all people have to do is say no. Not get violent, tell them to go fuck off or pull guns on them or anything. Just stand up for your rights is about all that you really have to do, you know. I, as I boycott, I write on the street in front there, open your eyes or love wins or whatever. Yeah, I see it in chalkboard. Chalkboard or yes, wash up. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Francine, we're going to let you go for right okay. now. But if they want to talk to you, we'll come back and interview see you some more. Anytime. Okay? All right. Thank peace. you, hon. Peace. Peace and love. Thank you. People don't know that this is about peace and love for the other people. They're not just doing this for glory to say, look at me, we're in the police's face. We're doing it to educate, you know, you guys are doing it to educate people and to show them that this is really about love and care for the whole society and them. All right, I'm going to let you go now, Francine. Awesome. All right, thank you for the interview. My pleasure, Vincent. Okay, bye-bye.